Hello Delstone, welcome to today's video. So guys, in today's video, we are going to be reacting to the Forgotten Great Wall of India. If you're new to this channel, please make sure you subscribe. It's going to mean a lot to me. And yeah, I'm talking too much. Let's go straight into it. Following the Battle of Plassey in 1757, a trading company became the rulers of the richest province in the world at the time, Bengal. This company, the East India Company, went on to rule large parts of India until 1858. The company was dissolved following the Indian Mutiny with the British government subsequently taking over control over India, which became the jewel in its crown. As we know, Wealth poured out of India during the rule of the company and during the British Raj. Heavy taxation was a massive burden during the British rule and this included the salt tax, introduced as early as 1759, Whoa. just two years after Plassey. The introduction of salt tax and the efforts to prevent Indians from smuggling in salt from the princely states led to the creation of the Great Hedge Wall of India around the year 1843. Wow. At its longest, the Great Hedge Wall of India ran for almost 4,000 kilometers. Are you serious? The story behind the Great Hedge of India begins, as do a lot of stories from British India, with the greed of the East India Company. Salt was a valuable commodity and a profitable export. So obviously, the East India Company took over the trade by any means necessary in the regions governed by them. By the year 1780, the Governor-General of India, Warren Hastings, had brought all salt manufacture in the Bengal Presidency under the company's control. He then decided to increase the salt tax tenfold to the point where the average Indian consumer at the time would have to pay what amounted to two months of his annual income on providing salt for his family for a year. While rates of the salt tax varied across British rule territories in India, the rates were highest in the Bengal Presidency. As expected, this unjust burden led to people trying to avoid paying the salt tax in a variety of ways. And this included smuggling in salt from the princely states of India. To try and stop this, the British built customs houses, but these were spread out and had little to no effect. These customs houses eventually led to the formation of the Inland Customs Line and by the 1840s, the Great Hedge Wall of India came into existence. The hedge wall started with thorn bushes being cut and put into place as a barrier. A. O. Hume, who was the Commissioner of Inland Customs between 1867 and 1870, decided that a living hedge would be much more cost effective and led to the rapid expansion of the Great Hedge Wall. The wall consisted of hedges, baboon, bamboo plants, and more. Hume, who had an avid interest in botany, also replaced the soil in places where the soil was poor. He also made sure the Great Hedge Wall was regularly watered and built trenches wow. alongside it in parts. As we see with walls and barriers today, the hedge wall wasn't foolproof. Smugglers still managed to get salt across by either driving their camels through the hedges or by simply tossing sacks of salt over wow. the wall. At its peak, the hedge wall ran from Punjab in the north to the border of the princely this states of Orissa insane. in East India. The tax was hard to impose and at its height, the Inland Customs Department employed more than 14,000 workers. The job of a customs officer was actually quite highly priced at the time due to the high pay of 5 rupees a month. Workers could also boost their income through other means including the proceeds from selling seized goods. However, the position did have its drawbacks. Custom workers were made to live away from their families and were almost always posted far away from their hometown. Clashes between workers and smugglers were also common, with both customs officers and smugglers often being killed. It did not help that the customs officers were more often than not outnumbered by the smugglers. Records show that more than 6,000 smugglers were apprehended and convicted in 1877-1878. Wow. The hedge wall was often considered a hindrance by British officials, 
because it obstructed free travel and free trade. Several British viceroys considered taking down the Great Hedge, but it was finally Lord Mayo, the viceroy from 1869 to 1872, who took the first steps. It was finally abandoned in 1879 and unfortunately, since it was mostly a natural barrier, barely anything remains today. The Great Hedge of India was mostly forgotten to the sands of time until Roy Moxham published his book, The Great Hedge of India, in 2001. Wow! Wow, this is insane. <laughs> insane, I never knew something like this existed. Wow. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment in the comment section. And I'm going to leave the video here. I'm out.